Hello, and welcome to another one of my videos on the topic of management science, where we use Excel to solve simple, everyday business problems in the areas of cost minimization, resource allocation, and employee assignments. And in this case, it will be the latter, employee assignments. Now, a few things before we get started. Number one, I will be going pretty quickly in this video because it is a bit more complex than others I have done. Number two, if you are watching this video on YouTube, please refer to the description below the video, and there you will find a link to the corresponding blog post. And on the blog post, I have the problem written out in long form with full tables. And that's also where you will find a blank version of the spreadsheet, so you can download it and follow right along. So let's talk a little about what problem uh, we have here. Upsale Company is holding its annual meeting. And they have decided that in order to complete certain tasks in preparation for the annual meeting, they have decided to hire temporary employees, or maybe they have asked a staffing service to provide employees. But since this will only be a short event, they only need these employees for a short amount of time. And if you look over on the left, their names are Ann, Ian, Joan, and Sean. And what it is, is they have four primary tasks that they need completed. Word processing, graphics for things like programs and presentations and things like that, packets, and conference registrations. So there are four employees and four tasks. Each employee can do each task with varying levels of productivity. And we're going to type that into the spreadsheet and we'll see how that works. Also, each employee has his or her hourly wage, depending on their experience and background and things like that. Ultimately, our goal is going to be to assign each person, each of the four employees, to one of the four tasks in a manner that minimizes our total labor cost. So this is an assignment problem where we're trying to assign employees to tasks in a manner that minimizes our total labor cost. Let me point something out here. We're not assigning individuals to tasks in a way that minimizes the time necessarily to do them. So the total cost may not be the most efficient in terms of time because it's partly a function of how fast each employee can do the task and their hourly wage. So it may turn out that way and it may not, but we're trying to minimize cost. So if you look at our spreadsheet here, we have three primary regions. At the top, you will see all four employee names and all four tasks. And then in that box, we're going to type in approximately how many hours it will take for each employee to complete each task. Over on the right-hand side, you will see hourly wage. And of course, that is that employee's hourly wage. Below where we see task, that will be the total cost that we will take their wage up above, multiply it by how many hours each task will take on an employee by employee basis, and that will go in the task rectangle there in the center. Okay, down below, this will actually be where we assign employees to each task. Now over on the far right, at the very bottom, you will see supply and demand. Since each employee will be assigned a task and each task will be assigned an employee, the supply and the demand will all be given a value of one. That just means that they're all filled. Now the total assignments and the total assigned, the orange sections, are used to validate our model. So the total assignments had better equal the supply of assignments and the total assigned had better equal the demand. So you can see the equal signs in those two sections. We're going to be telling Excel to make sure those are equal. So the assignments must equal supply. The assigned much e must equal demand. The blue in the middle, that's actually what Excel is going to find for us. It's either going to put a 1 or a 0 in each cell. And if that cell has a 1, that's the assignment. So if Ann has a 1 in graphics, our model has assigned Ann the graphics task. Now on the lower right, you will see total cost. In our model, remember we're trying to minimize our total cost. So Excel will choose the blue section in a manner that minimizes our total cost, which is the pinkish cell in the lower right. In order to keep the video length reasonable, I have already built in certain features to the spreadsheet. The most notable is the naming of cell regions. 
What I mean by that is, for example, if I were to highlight the hourly wage column, if you look over in the top left of the spreadsheet, it actually says hourly wage. And if I were to highlight the required time hours cell region, if you look in the top left, it says required time. So in prior videos, I actually left the video running while I named them, but you, as you can imagine, that takes a lot of time. So I just went ahead and built it into the spreadsheet. So when you download it, it's already good to go. So if you see names in formulas and in the solver, that's where they're coming from. And just real quickly, if you want to see all the different regions that are named, if you go to formulas towards the middle top, you'll see name manager. If you click on that, and this will give you a list of all the named regions. So that's a way to sort of edit them and delete them and things like that if you, if you need to. So I'll go ahead and close that. Now, another thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to pause it when I'm typing in data that doesn't need to be live. So I will start typing in data. I'll tell you I'm going to pause it and then I'll start it again. And then you can pause and type in that data on your own. So that again, that's just to keep the video shorter. So we have an overview of our assignment. We're going to assign four employees to four tasks in a way that minimizes our cost. We have certain features already built into Excel in the spreadsheet that you can download. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is begin typing in some data. All right. The first set of data we're going to type in is the required time hours. Now in this group of cells, Upsell Company has estimated or been provided information about each employee in terms of how long each employee would take approximately in each task. So this is going to be number of hours. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a couple that I'm going to pause, type in the rest, and then we'll resume when I'm done. So Ann was 35 hours for word processing, 41 hours for graphics, 27 hours for packets, and 40 for registration. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish typing these in, and then I'll resume. Okay, so I've went ahead and typed in the rest of the required time hours for each employee in each task. So if you want to go ahead and fill those in, you can pause the video now. The next few things I'm going to type in, I'll just leave the video going, and that is each employee's hourly wage. For Ann, we have $14 per hour. For Ian, $12 an hour. For Joan, $13 an hour. And for Sean, $15 an hour. And I'll go ahead and format that. There we go. Now the next thing I'll type in, again, it just takes a second, so I'll go ahead and leave the video going. And that is the supply and demand here at the bottom. Remember, supply and demand just mean that each employee has a task and each task has an employee. So these are all ones. So we'll just go ahead and type in one for all the supply and one for all the demand. Okay. So I'll go ahead and pause again so you can uh, catch up to typing that in. Okay, and we are back. Now the next thing we're going to do is fill in the middle section here. And remember, this is just each employee's estimated hours of completing each task times their wage. So for Ann, for word processing, this will be the estimated number of hours it would take Ann to complete the word processing times her hourly wage. So of course we're going to use formulas here and I'm going to assume you have some working knowledge of Excel, but once I do one or two, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do them pretty quickly. So where Ann meets the word processing cell, we're going to enter a formula that is equals the 35 hours above, again, which is the number of hours Ann is estimated to take for word processing. And we're going to multiply that by her wage. So times her wage. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the F4 key and you will notice that that changes the hourly wage cell reference. And that will allow us to drag across and do some autofill. So all I did was hit F4 on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see that 35 times $14 is $490. Now all we're going to do is just drag over 
and that fills in Anne's row. Now we're going to go down and do the same thing for Ian. Equals, in this case it's the 47, times Ian's wage, which was 12. Again, I'm going to hit F4 to change that cell reference. Hit Enter. And fill over. And all that does is that, that keeps the, the hourly wage constant as we drag it across. That's all that does. Okay, down to Jones. So this is equals Jones word processing cell times her wage. We'll hit F4 again. Then we'll drag that across. And last one is Sean. Same thing. And there we are. So again, the great thing about using those formulas is that if we were to change anything in the tasks, the hours estimated, or to change their hourly wage, that would then filter down into the cost because it's formula-based. Okay, so if you need a couple of seconds to go ahead and finish that, I'm going to go ahead and pause again, and I'll be right back. And we are back. So what we have up to this point are hours per task times wage, and that is the cost in the middle. Now we have a couple of more formulas to do, and then we're almost ready to solve it. So we're going to begin under the first cell of the total assignments column. Now think about this for a second. How many total assignments can Anne have? Well, she can only have one. Remember, we're assigning one employee to one task. So all the cells to the left of total assignments had better equal just one. So there should be one number one in those cells and three zeros. And that will tell us whatever Anne is assigned to. So this total assignments column is going to be a formula and it will be very simple. Equals the sum of Anne's task cells. Close parentheses and that's it. Okay. Now the cool thing about Excel is we can just drag down and it fills in for Ian, Joan, and Sean as well. Now again, all this is doing is this is a check to make sure each person has one assignment. So in the end, this total assignments column had better equal our supply column. That'll tell us that each person got one task. Now the same sort of concept here is for the total assigned. Each task had better have an employee with it. So if we add down, the total assigned for word processing had better be one. That tells us that that task did get assigned to one person. So this is the same formula, equals sum, and then the column below word processing, close parentheses. And now we can drag it over, and there we go. So all this is doing is making sure that each task has an employee and each employee has a task. So if you think about it, what's going to happen here? When we use the solver here in a second, Excel is going to assign each person to a task. So when we add over, it's going to equal 1. And then when we add downward, it's going to equal 1. And remember, because of the supply and the demand cells, we're going to tell Excel that only one employee can have one task and only a task can have one employee. So again, this is just setting up, setting up constraints. We're using this section of the spreadsheet to, to tell Excel, you know, wait, 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 wait. We can only have one task per person, one person per task. That's all we're doing right here at the bottom. Okay. Now the last formula we got to do is our cost, which is very important to us. And that is the lower right hand cell under total cost. And the formula for this is a little bit different. This is a formula I use extensively in the other videos, but it looks something like this. Equals sum product. Sum product, Excel guesses that's what you want. Now, what's going to be our total cost? What's going to be our cost, which is this area in the middle. So we're going to type cost because we named that region of cells cost. 
and we're going to multiply that region by who gets what task. So for example, if Ian is assigned word processing, then our cost will be $564 because there will be a one down here and 564 times one okay, will be how this function works. So what we're going to do is multiply this group of cells under cost. We're going to multiply that by a task assignment, which we call assignment. And hit enter. Now let me just explain that one more time because I know it can be confusing. In this blue region at the bottom, we're only going to have ones and zeros. Each column will only have one, one and each row will only have one, one. So what we're doing is taking each corresponding section of cells and multiplying and adding them together. So for example, if Ian had word processing, that would be one times 564. And if Anne had graphics, that would be plus one times 574 and so on and so forth. So it's just multiplying these two cell regions together, adding them up, and that's going to be our total cost. That's what the sum product function does. If that's confusing, watch another one of my videos, and because of time, I'm able to explain it a little bit more in depth there. But we're just multiplying two rectangles of cells together. Okay, so we are now ready to have Excel use the solver to find our solution. Now the solver is an add-in that's not activated in Excel by default. So if you do not see it on your menu, you'll need to go to File and Add-ins to activate it. I'm not going to go into that here, but if you Google it or look in another one of my videos, I do show you how to set it up there on a couple of different videos. So solver is under Data at the top, and then over on the right you'll see Solver. So let's go ahead and click that. Now the first thing the solver wants to know is, well, what is our objective? And remember, in this problem, our objective is to minimize our total cost. So we named it total cost. And that is our pinkish cell in the lower right. So we're asking Excel to minimize that value. And we do that by selecting the min radio button here. And the next thing we got to tell Excel is what we want it to find out, what we want it to manipulate in order to make our cost the minimum. And if you remember, we're going to have Excel find this blue region here at the bottom of our spreadsheet. And it will only be ones and zeros. If an employee gets that task, there's a one in the box. If they do not, it will be a zero. So by changing variable cells, and this is called assignment. That's what we named the blue cells there. So, set objective of total cost, minimize it by changing the assignment cells. Now, remember we do have two constraints in this problem, which I mentioned before. Each employee can only have one task, and each task can only have one employee. So where it says subject to the constraints, that's where we're going to tell Excel that those two rules. So we'll go ahead and click add. I'll drag down here. Now we're going to type this in exactly how it looks right above it. So our total assignments column, total assignments, must equal our supply. So total assignments must equal supply. Go ahead and click OK. And our next one is total assigned much, must equal demand, which is there at the bottom. So total assigned must equal demand. Okay. So we're just about ready to press the solve button and see what Excel finds for us. Remember, just to reiterate, we're minimizing total cost by changing the assignments subject to the constraints that each employee can only have one task and each task can only have one employee. 
It should be by default, but uh, where it says make, un make unconstrained variables non-negative, make sure that's checked because we're not going to have any negative assignments in this problem, which doesn't make a lot of sense anyway. Where it says select solving method, make sure it's simplex LP is selected because we're doing a simplex linear programming problem. And hopefully if everything is typed in correctly and no spelling mistakes, we click solve and Excel will find our answer. Okay. So it says solver has found a solution. All constraints have been satisfied. Do we want to keep our solver solution? And yes, we do. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, I'm going to change the color of this text in total cost so we can see it a bit better. There we go. Now let's take a look at what we have. If you notice, in the blue range of cells that each employee has been assigned one task, and each task has one employee. Again, now you can see where the total assignments column and the total assigned row, why we have those. Now, of course, you can tell that those equal the supply and demand there in the green. So that's when it says our constraints were met, that's it. That's our con those are our constraints. Now, of course, we're trying to minimize our total cost. So if we look at the uh, lower right-hand side, we'll see total cost. In this case, I'll go ahead and put a little dollar sign in front of it. So our total cost to hire these four employees for these four tasks is going to cost $1,957. And that is the minimum cost we can in incur in this assignment. So Excel went through and found the minimum cost that would cover each assignment and each employee. We're not saying this will be the fastest necessarily way to get everything done. What we're saying here is that it's the cheapest. So if we wanted to get it done very quickly, we may have to pay more. So this is strictly on cost. All right, we have our employee's productivity there at the top times their wage, which gives us the cost there in the middle. And then we use the Excel solver to assign each employee to a task. Given the constraints of assignments and supply and assigned and demand, we've assigned each employee to a task and each task to an employee in the best possible way that minimizes our cost. Thank you very much, and I hope you learned a lot.